remember Mr. Johnny? I hope you remember that he loves to travel. He has visited many hill stations of India like Kunu Manali, Kashmir, Musari, Nanital, etc. Now, all these hill stations are located in the lap of vast and majestic Himalayas. The scenic beauty of Himalayas is mesmerizing. We can find snow capped mountains, lush green valleys and beautiful lakes. Trekking and skiing are some of the popular adventurous sports that are practiced here. The spectacular and panoramic view of Himalayas makes it one of the most popular tourist spots in the world. Now do you know what kind of landform is Himalayas? A mountain is a landform with relatively higher elevation compared to the surrounding land. The average altitude of a mountain is 600 meter above the surrounding land. See here we have a picture of a mountain and see how small these houses look compared to this mountain. So from this you can understand that the mountains are usually very tall and their average altitude that is this height is 600 meter above the surrounding land. Now, apart from the tall height, mountains can also be identified by their steep slopes. That is, the mountains usually have steep slopes. Now, a mountain can exist individually, like as you can see in the first picture, or they can also exist in groups. See, here we have a group of mountains and this is called a mountain range. So, how can you distinguish mountain from other landforms? So, a mountain is an elevated landmass with steep slopes. And also, mountains have confined summit or peak. That is, you will always find mountains have these conical structures. And this is called a summit or a peak. So these are the characteristics of a mountain that is they are usually very tall, they have steep slopes and they have a peak or a summit. Now let us see how these mountains are formed. In our previous lesson we have studied that landforms are formed by natural forces. The natural forces may act on the earth's surface and they are called exogenic forces while some natural forces act beneath the earth's surface and they are called endogenic forces. Landforms like mountains are formed both due to internal processes that is the processes acting beneath the earth's surface and the external forces that is the forces that act above the earth's surface. Now the internal forces mainly includes movement of tectonic plates. Now we can find two types of movements, vertical movement that is subduction or upliftment of tectonic plates and horizontal compression of crustal layer due to convergence of tectonic plates. That is as the tectonic plates converge or move closer, the overlying rocks crumble and these two processes are caused by forces acting inside the earth that is they are mainly endogenic processes. Now apart from these mountains are also formed by exogenic forces that is denudation of earth surface. As you can see in this picture how a land surface is being eroded by wind. So, the natural forces like wind, water or glacier erode the earth's surface or denude the earth's surface and this is another kind of process in which mountains are formed. Now, we will study about each of these processes in details. Now, depending on the process of formation, mountains can be classified into various types. So, now let us learn about the different types of mountains and their processes of formation. Let us perform an activity. Take some hand towels and lay them on top of one another. Take two shoe boxes and push them towards the center from both the ends. What does happen? Well, the hand towels, as you can see in this video, gets folded. 
Similar to the previous activity, mountains are also formed due to convergence of two tectonic plates. Here in this video, we can see how a mountain range was formed due to convergence of two tectonic plates. The mountain range that you are watching in this video is the Himalayan mountain range and the two plates that converge or colluded were the Indian plate and the Eurasian plate. So the Himalayan mountain range was formed due to convergence of Indian plate and Eurasian plate. So now let us clearly understand how four mountains are formed. We saw in the previous activity when two shoe boxes are moved closer to one another, the towel placed in between crumbled and got uplifted. Similarly, when two tectonic plates move closer or converge, the overlying crustal layers crumble and forms a fold mountain. This process is known as orogenesis, that is the process in which fold mountains are formed. Thus, fold mountains are formed by the convergence of tectonic plates. Now, let us again understand the formation of fold mountains considering the example of the Himalayas. See, as we already saw in the video, Himalayas was formed millions of years ago by the convergence of Indian plate and the Eurasian plate. We know that our ancient world was quite different from the modern world where we live in today. The modern world was formed by the continuous interaction of the tectonic plates. Now, these two tectonic plates are of different density. The Eurasian plate is less dense than the Indian plate and therefore the Eurasian plate moved up while the Indian plate subducted. And due to this, the overlying rocks folded or crumbled and led to the formation of the Himalayan mountain range. So here we can see that due to convergence of two tectonic plates, that is the Indian plate and the Eurasian plate, the overlying rocks crumbled and led to the formation of the Himalayas. This map shows the location of the Himalayas. The Himalayan range is located in the north and northeastern part of India. And this is an example of a fold mountain. Now, before we proceed with our lesson, can you help me to answer this question? Which of the following is responsible for the formation of a fold mountain? Is it a volcano, an earthquake, erosion or collision of two tectonic plates? Well, the correct answer is collision of two tectonic plates because we just learned that fold mountains are formed when two tectonic plates collide and therefore the overlying rocks gets folded or crumble and leads to the formation of a fold mountain. So now let us continue with our lesson. We saw that when two tectonic plates converge or collide, the overlying rocks crumble and they form an undulating surface. See, in this image, we can see various parts of a fold mountain. The upfolded part of a fold mountain, which looks like an inverted U, is called anticline. While the downfolded part of the land, which looks like U, is called syncline. So, anticline is the upfolded part of the mountain, while syncline is the downfolded part. Now, can you mark this part in a real fold mountain? See, this looks like an inverted U. So, this is an anticline, while this part is U-shaped. So, it is a syncline. Now, do you know even our country India has two fold mountains? Can you name them? Well, we have two fold mountains in our country. The first one is the Himalayas and the second one is the Aravallis. Now, can you find any difference between these two mountains? Well, from these two images, it is very clear that these two mountain ranges are quite different from one another. Well, if you look at the first picture, that is the picture of the Himalayas, you can see that the Himalayas is very tall. See, 
it is very tall and it has steep slopes while if you look at the second picture you can find that the ravalis are not so tall and also they have gentle slopes and rounded peaks so these two mountain ranges are quite different the first one has high peaks and steep slopes while the second one that is the aravallis have rounded peaks and gentle slopes now why these two mountains are different the first one is an example of a young fold mountain while the second one is an example of an old fold mountain now the young fold mountain as the name suggests are very young that is they are formed very recently that is around 50 to 60 million years ago while the old fold mountain were formed in ancient period that is long time ago around 350 million years ago so the himalayas are young fold mountains that is they are formed very recently and are still building while the aravallis are old fold mountains and were formed quite a long time ago the and they have been weathered and eroded by natural forces like wind and water and because of which their heights have reduced so due to this reasons himalayas are very tall and have steep slopes while the old fold mountain like the aravallis have rounded peaks and have lower elevation so the main difference between young fold mountains and old fold mountains is that young fold mountains are formed very recently and due to which they have greater elevation while the old fold mountains were formed long time ago and due to which they have lower elevations Now let us perform another activity. Take an eraser and a pencil and mark two lines on the eraser. Now cut the eraser along the lines. Now push the eraser and try to lift it up. What happens? The middle section of the eraser subsides. Similarly, mountains are also formed due to subduction and divergence of tectonic plates. We know that our Earth's crust is divided into several major and minor tectonic plates. Here in this image, we can see the major and minor tectonic plates of the Earth's crust. Now, these tectonic plates are not static, but they are in constant motion. The arrows. that we can see in this map shows the direction in which these tectonic plates move so the tectonic plates either converge see here the african plate is moving in this side and the antarctic plate is moving in this side so they are converging while the plates also diverge see the african plate is moving in this side and the south american plate is moving in this side so it's a divergent plate boundary so due to this convergence and divergence of tectonic plates mountains are formed so in the previous image we saw that the tectonic plates are in constant motion during such movement when two tectonic plates diverge they stretch the land in between them and this causes cracks or fault on the earth surface now the land in between these two fault lines get submerged and this leads to the formation of block mountains so block mountains are formed by the divergence of two tectonic plates and this process is known as taphrogeny now the land in between may either submerge also gets uplifted so in a previous video we saw how block mountains are formed and due to this divergence we have cracks or faults along the earth surface and the land in between these fault lines either submerges or gets uplifted now the raised section of the land is called the horst horst is the raised section while the depressed part or the submerged part of the land is called graben now horst or the uplifted section generally forms the block mountain while the graben or the submerged part forms the rift valley
so in a previous slide we saw that when the land in between two fault lines submerges then a rift valley is formed now sometimes a rift valley is drained by a river and then it leads to the formation of a rift valley lake one such rift valley lake is also present in our country india it is present here in the central part of india and the rift valley is drained by narmada river now here in this picture we can see the rift valley lake that is present in india and it is drained by the narmada river there are two mountain ranges on both sides of the rift valley they represent block mountains the first one is the vindhyas range and the second one is the satpura range so this part which is submerged is the graben while this ray section is the host so the rift valley that is present in india it is drained by the narmada river and it is located between two block mountains the vindhyas and satpura ranges now apart from india rift valley are also present in other parts of the world can you name the largest rift valley of the world the east african rift valley is the largest rift valley in the world see here we have the image of the east african rift valley which is the largest rift valley in the world now this rift valley is present along the eastern boundary of africa this is the map of africa and here we can see where the east african rift valley is located the east african rift valley is 6400 km long and it is 48 to 64 km wide so we can see that the east african rift valley is very large so in this lesson we first read about the definition of a mountain a mountain is an elevated land mass with steep slope and they also have high peaks or summit now we also read how mountains are formed both by exogenic that is the forces acting on the surface of the earth and endogenic that is the forces acting below the surface of the earth now the forces acting below the earth surface include movement of tectonic plates and the mountains that are formed by divergence of tectonic plates due to which a part of land either gets submerged or uplifted is called a block mountain in our next video we will study about another type of mountain that is residual mountains Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to our 5000 amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests. get all your doubt resolved instantly learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads so at delta step learning is not just fun and easy but it's rewarding too so register for free now